Hello there, everybody. My name is Lewis Whelan, and I publish the official relocation guides on Atlanta that are distributed by the first multiple listing service of Atlanta. There are altogether five different publications serving different parts of town. They are about living and working and doing business in the metro area in various parts of town. They're all under the distributed by the multiple listing service, but they also carry the names of various chambers of commerce on the masthead, such as the North Fulton Chamber, the uh, Gwinnett Chamber, the Cobb Association of Realtors, and um, they're distributed to home buyers and businesses moving here on behalf of their respective real estate agents. They are on my website, atlantacommunityprofiles.com, and they're on the uh, FMLS website for the benefit of real estate agents. Who There are 55,000 real estate agents right now in 2,600 different real estate brokerage firms in the metro area. And the magazines are in their offices and so they can have access to them to distribute to their clients. I'm also a realtor with KW Commercial and I focus on multifamily and investment properties and warehouses. Um, my website for that uh, aspect of my life is lewheeland.com. So every day, every week or so, we interview community leaders, people who are contributing to the well-being of their communities and to the metro area. And today it is my distinct pleasure to once again welcome back to our show the city manager of the great city of Woodstock, Jeff Moon. Jeff, great to have you back. Thanks for taking time from your schedule to rejoin us on this program. Thank you, Lou, I appreciate the invitation. Jeff is a graduate of um, Southern Miss where he got his master's and before that he has a bachelor's degree from Troy University. And he has done a phenomenal job as city manager of Woodstock. And just um, not too sure how many years has it been now that you've been as a manager, the city manager. I've been here 13 and a half years since April of 2008. So in that period of time, the city has grown by leaps and bounds up like over what, over 10% in population, right, Jeff? Uh, during that period of time, we've, we've pretty much doubled in population. I missed a zero. Okay. One. That's okay. <laughs> Close. Give or take. Uh, but um, so the population is 33,700. Is that correct? Is that what uh, the census showed us a little? The 2020 census put us a little over 35,000. 35 now, okay. You are 30 miles from downtown Atlanta, and your city is 12 square miles. Um, you are a Georgia Plan First community and a recipient of the Georgia Municipal Association's Live, Work, and Play City Award. Just this year, Money Magazine named you as the 33rd best place to live in America. The average home sold in October, Jeff, um, according to FMLS records, sold for $387,000, which is a 19.1% increase over the price last year at this time, last October. 70% of the people in your community are homeowners. Uh, you added a 100-acre park recently and invested over $47 million in improving your downtown and developing it, and boy, has it ever paid off. The new amphitheater is a huge success, um, and we'll hear a little bit about that. Um, basically, you've received a tremendous number of awards and accolades. Um, you were ranked... Um, uh, the top, the, among the top 20 safest cities in the, Georgia, the coolest place to live, the top 10 places to raise a family, and many others. So congratulations on all of your recognition. I know you've worked very hard to achieve that kind of recognition. So, uh, Thank you. Jeff, I've been to Woodstock many times lately for some of your fine restaurants and points of interest and your amphitheater. Tell us a little bit about, give us an idea, what, 
what's new and exciting in Woodstock? I know you're t planning to have a big night tonight with the World Series. Yeah, thanks, Lou. We <clears throat> appreciate uh, all the comments, and it certainly is a great place to live, work, and play, and raise a family uh, here here in Woodstock. So, uh, yeah, as you mentioned tonight, we're hosting a World Series watch party. Uh, this is uh, Game Six tonight. So we this is six nights we've had an event at our amphitheater. Uh, you know, we have big events and small events at the amphitheater. Uh, some events. Uh, like this one was a last minute spur, spur of the moment decision to host a watch party. Uh, it's a free event for the public to come and, and, and watch the World Series with, uh, with fellow Braves fans and, and support the uh, home team, if you will. Uh, you know, we have large events in there with our summer concert series, and we have uh, a lot of private events that churches are beginning to use it more in, in some school events. So it's, uh, it's really kind of becoming a focal point in our downtown area. Okay, so um, basically, if you, uh, one of the things I'd love to do is eat out, and, and you've added a lot of new restaurants over there in the last few years. Tell us a little bit about the, um, the, uh, the dining kind of profile. Sure. Yeah, there's a lot of <clears throat> restaurants. There's over 25 restaurants in the downtown area now. We're pushing, I guess, 30. Um, there's everything from, you know, specific types of food, whether you like Italian or whether you like just good Americana or, or Southern food, there's a lot of chef driven restaurants. Uh, we've just recently had Public House has been the most recent one to open in downtown. So there's a, there's a good variety and there's a lot of uh, different types of restaurants and, and a lot of them have live music entertainment uh, on, a, on a weeknight or even especially on weekends. So really we pride ourselves in the fact that there's something for everyone in downtown, for families, to date night, to, to whatever you're looking for, business entertainment, uh, that you can, you can pretty well find it uh, from, a, from a culinary standpoint in downtown Woodstock. So your population has grown. I knew it was, I, was, I don't know where I got, I read my notes wrong, was, I knew it was more than 10%, but what do, to what do you attribute the doubling of the population in such a short time? That's way above the average for the metro area. Yeah, I think uh, I, there's not any one thing that I would point to. I think there's a variety of things. Obviously, location. We're we're still we're outside the perimeter. We're, we're still close enough where you can get very easily inside the perimeter with the interstate that runs through the community which is I-575 in connection to I-75. But we've really focused on developing the quality of life things. And I think that has really made us attractive to both uh, empty nesters and folks with young families is we focused on walkability in our downtown area. We focused on events. We focused on our trail system. Uh, we've got good quality schools. Uh, we have uh, a lot, we built a downtown playground uh, we've just really tried to focus on those things that are quality of life, that give people who like to be outside, like to do things, many opportunities to do those uh, on, a, on a daily basis and in a safe environment. We are very proud of our police department and the fact that they're nationally accredited. And, uh, and we really focus on having a fun, safe environment for people to enjoy with their families. Well, I noticed that there are, that the, when you walk around Woodstock in the evening, especially on the weekend nights, you'll notice that, or I noticed at least, that a very high percentage seems to be younger families. Have you noticed that, or is that just my imagination because I'm getting so old? <laughs> well, well it, it's really our, you know, our two demographics where we see the most growth or, or empty nesters, uh, people downsizing from large houses and want to move in the downtown area so that they can walk uh, everywhere. And the other is young families. And, uh, and a lot of that is because of the schools, because of the safe environment, because of the outdoor recreation and things to do um, for, for families with kids. Uh, between our walking trails, our bike trails, uh, you know, you, you name it, they have access to it. So we really, you know, have seen young families and, and empty nesters as really kind of our growth areas that we see a lot of people moving into the community for. And then do you, um, I noticed too about, uh, one thing about um, the area, 
the downtown area is that there seem to be a lot of new housing developments popping up. Are you, what is your kind of a profile on that segment of life in Woodstock? Sure. What what we're seeing, and we're kind of in the in the phase of development trends that that cities go through. We're seeing a lot of redevelopment, um, especially in our downtown area. Uh, we'll see a lot of uh, people are taking buying older homes and, and upgrading them, um, adding on to them. Some cases tearing them down, building new homes. So you know, right if you're looking for something right now under construction in the downtown area or condos, townhomes, single family homes, small lot, large lot, it, there's a little bit of everything. And just depending on, on what it is you yourself are looking for, for yourself and your family and what your preferences are, there's a lot of different options that you can find in the core downtown that are currently under construction or development. Well, you have um, 12 square miles. What uh, What's the outlook for uh, uh, growth in commerce and business and industry and warehouses and commercial aspect of the city's growth? Sure. So, you know, we're continuing to see retail growth. Um, just for instance, Whataburger just announced that they're building one of their, I think we're the third or fourth Georgia location in their expansion. Uh, we're, we're working on attracting office to our downtown area. Um, we're getting ready to redevelop the uh, Morgan's Ace Hardware site in downtown, which is about three and a half acres that the city has bought. That's going to be a mixed use development with office and hotel and a parking deck. Um, so we, we are seeing continued commercial growth. Um, a lot of the what I would consider warehousing and manufacturing is being done kind of on the outskirts of the city out in out in unincorporated Cherokee County, but just a mile or two miles from the city limits in an industrial park that the county uh, owns and operates. Uh, but we're, we're, you know, right now our focus is on, on office uh, and we're still continuing to see um, commercial development uh, in, our, in um, our Highway 92 corridor and in our downtown area. I jokingly say we're the smallest town in America that has three warehouse wholesale clubs. Uh, because we have the three big ones, all three inside the city limits, and I can't find another city our size that has all three. So uh, based upon what we're seeing with our, our sales tax collections, and it's, it's things are still going strong as far as our core economy. One of the things that is of interest to me and to a lot of other people is uh, the category of multifamily. And... Uh, there seems to be a greater demand than ever for multifamily. What is your position on that uh, aspect of real estate? Um, currently, we have a new multifamily development in the Ridgewalk corridor that is uh, going through the design process that's already been approved. Um, there are two, two other existing projects that have been entitled over the last decade um, but right now, that's all we're seeing, uh, with the possible exception of a condo project in our downtown. Um, we, we have had some multifamily added. Uh, we understand that the demand is there, but we try to balance that um, in, in the city with, as you mentioned, 70 percent home ownership. We try and try and keep a ratio of at least 70 percent home ownership and, and limit multifamily and only add multifamily. Uh, as uh, as opportunities present that are unique or special, and um, that's that's been the primary focus is is finding those projects that that really council felt warranted uh, approval. So, what are your priorities um, at this time for continued growth? Or are you? trying to level off in the growth or you've already doubled your population in 10 years are you planning to continue that kind of growth or what what are your city goals and plans so i think you know i, I don't think any of us set out to double the growth and double the population in a in a in a you know 10 to 15 year period that just kind of happened 
Um, we, we're trying to focus now on infrastructure improvements that position the city well to serve the growth that has already occurred and the growth that is coming and the potential growth in the future. By that, we're focusing heavy on street improvements, intersection improvements, uh, in implementing a grid street system in our downtown area that will allow for continued growth in the future and also better serve existing residents that we have. We're focusing on updating water lines, sewer lines, those type things that are in the ground that people don't see that aren't very sexy, but are also very uh, essential to continued growth. Uh, so I, I think um, from the city's policy standpoint, it's not just growth for growth's sake, but quality growth and, and focusing on uh, continued home ownership as a priority, uh, continued focus on in our downtown area on improving parking options and availability and trying to focus on employment opportunities in our downtown so that a large portion of our population is not leaving the city on a daily basis. And that investment in, um in, this, in uh, the downtown area has proven to be 47 million, has turned out to be an extremely good investment in return on your money. Um, what are some of the major benefits that you've gotten from that investment in your mind? Well, I, I think, um, you know, one of the city's mission statements is that downtown is the heart and soul of the city and to maintain that and so i think the investment in downtown you know you you hear a rising tide lifts all ships i think it has spilled over into the community from outside the core of downtown um you know you mentioned um the notoriety and the awards that have come from being listed three of the last six years in money magazines list of top 50 um, cities. I, I think if you are a homeowner in the city and you've been a homeowner during the last 15 years, the value that you've seen your home increase and um, has been significant. So I, I think the investment has allowed us to offer the quality of life type things that people want to see. It has protected and increased people's investment in real estate in the city. Uh, and it has allowed us to make a name for Woodstock, uh, you know, in Georgia regionally uh, and even with national recognition as a, as a place um, that, you know, is a good place, great place to raise your family. And I don't think without that investment, we would be in that position today. What about um, the senior segment of the population and assisted living communities and memory care facilities are popping up all over the place. Um, is that happening in Woodstock or is that a target for you or, or not? It is. We have a senior living ordinance that um, was one of the model ordinances that was created in the mid 2000s and working with the Atlanta Regional Commission. And we've had a number of senior developments that have occurred in the last 10 years. Uh, specifically, we've had three open in the last three years and really, or three to four years, and then they run the gamut from independent living on site all the way up to memory care, all under one complex. Um, we've we've had, and, and when I mentioned that empty nesters were one of our, kind of one of our growth areas, there's uh, something unique in the city's tax code, and that is that if you're 62 years of age, you're exempt from city property tax. It's not based on the value of your house. As long as you are homestead exempted in your house, you don't pay property tax to the city. And that has um, been one of the appeal points uh, for that demographic uh, in moving to the community. So whether it be individual home ownership or whether uh, it be the development of some institutional type facilities that allow for independent living all the way up to full nursing care, we've seen a growth in that sector in the last decade. Surely that segment of the population seems to be growing faster than most really uh, any other population segment. Well, Everybody's getting older, except me, of course. I'm holding <laughs> steady here. <laughs> but one thing that's interesting that we've seen is having families with young kids and the growth in the empty nesters are not mutually exclusive because what we're seeing is a lot of 
grandparents bouncing back from Florida or relocating here from other parts of the country to be near their kids and um and grandkids. And so I can't tell you the number of families, even in two, even in one of our assisted living facilities, was talking to a a lady at the grand opening, asked her why she moved there, and she told me it was be near her grandkids who lived in Woodstock. So I, I think we're, you know, it's, it goes back to that, that whole focus on family. And, and that's just not parents with young kids. That's, that's multi-generational. One of the attractions, too, of Woodstock is the, the, the trail system and walking. I mean, I, it seems to me that everybody is out riding bikes and walking, and the whole population seems to be getting healthier and healthier and Tell us a little bit about your uh, your uh, paradigm on that aspect of Woodstock. Sure. In 2008, the city ad- adopted our Green Prince Trail System, which is a series of interconnected trails um, that reach not just throughout the city, but out into the county uh, with future connections designed into Holly Springs, Roswell, the one we're working on now is a joint project we have with Cobb County and Cherokee County that will connect our Reeves Creek Trail from Highway 92 down into Cherokee, uh, down into Cobb County that we received a, a, a grant from the Atlanta Regional Commission to do. Um, that ultimately what that's gonna do is it will connect the downtown Woodstock all the way over to the Silver Comet Trail through the Cobb County um, trail system. So I tell people you can, I, I can, if I wanted to, you could ride your bike or walk in, in the next three years, you'll be able to walk from downtown Woodstock to a Braves game, or you'll be able to ride your bike all the way to Alabama and never get on the road. You'll be on the Silver Comet Trail with the connections that we're working with Cobb County to make. So we've tried to to give a lot of people access. Um, I talk to people who ride their bikes to downtown for dinner, who ride their bikes to downtown from work using the trail system. And, and the, it's turned into not just for recreation and fitness, but it's also turned into an alternate means of transportation. And uh, which is, has been uh, one of the unintended consequences. I wish we could say that was part of the grand design when the, that trail system was approved, but that has been an unintended consequence, which has been very helpful. So our trail system is very popular uh, and we we're continue to invest in that and continue to try and make connections with that. And uh, not just connections inside the city, but external connections outside the jurisdiction as well. Jeff, COVID has uh, impacted our lives in so many ways, and it's not over yet, and we don't know when it will be over. Tell us a little bit about how it's impacted Woodstock and how the city is helping businesses get through this difficult time. Sure, I'll I'll be happy to do that. you know, we were not immune, uh, like everywhere it, it, it hit Woodstock as well, both operationally from the services we deliver um, to just, just even personally. I spent nine days in the hospital with it myself uh, in July of 20. So one of the things we're proud of is, is from our, our police and fire and, and, and all of our employees, public works, building inspection, while our offices may have been uh, closed to the public for you know, a couple of months in 2020, we never stopped delivering services. Uh, we still, our inspectors work from, worked from home to continue um, doing building inspections and site inspections to the police and fire responding to medical calls, both to you know, medical uh, senior uh, institutions or to individual homes. So from a service uh, standpoint, we, we didn't slow down. We changed, had to change how we did things. Uh, for instance, we started doing, you could follow all your plans. We, we converted to allow you to follow plans digitally as opposed to having to walk in and hand in a set of plans for review. And that's something we've continued with um, and will continue with as uh, one of the legacies of COVID. We had to learn how do we do our council meetings and allow for public input online, which we were able to successfully um, do that. But ironically, one of the things, um, Lou, that is very counterintuitive is, uh, you know, calendar year 2020, we issued more single family built building permits than at any time since the mid 2000s, like 2004, 2005. We had more single family 
permits in 2020 and 2021 is going to top 2020. So it didn't slow down the building. Uh, it didn't, our, our SPLOS collections increased. Um, very counterintuitive. And some sectors of the community were hurt hard, restaurants uh, in particular, and hotels, but some on the retail side uh, were not. And that was very, um, very counterintuitive. It was a very uneven economic situation. So we did some things with council's help. Um, we were waiving fee, waived fees for, uh, for, for small businesses. For instance, a business occupation tax or business license in the city is based on revenue. And um, what council did for the 2020 renewals is if your business was under a million dollars, you didn't have to pay a fee in total sales. And so we, we adjusted to try and help businesses. We tried to help hotels with waiving some fees and inspections for them because those sectors that were impacted the most, we, we, we tried to help. And, uh, and I think they were very appreciative for that last year. Well, you mentioned um, the housing. Again, we'll just go back to that. One thing that as a realtor I noticed and uh, it's impacted everybody in my line of work is there is a shortage of housing and the forecast is for that to continue for a variety of reasons. Do you see that um, as an element in, in your everyday life? And because that is one of the elements that drive prices. Your home prices are 387,000 is the average home price sale for Woodstock in, uh, this, in October, which is a 19.1% increase over last October. And a lot of that is because of a shortage. What what how, what's your paradigm on that, Jeff? Yeah, it's 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 interesting because the prices increase so much, but we issued more single family building permits than we had in you know almost 20 years back to when the city had its initial boom in 2004 and 5. Um, you know, I in talking to real estate agents just uh, you know, everybody says, don't put, don't put it up for sale if you don't have a plan. Um, the city tried to buy a small piece of property that had a small home on it for a road project that went on the market. We made an offer three days uh, after it went on the market and they had already been 11 offers on the property all above listing price. So um, I don't know how long that continues. I don't know how healthy that is to stay um, that hot of a market. Um, I don't know that there's a lot we can do about that. The national economy may take care of that some, but um, it's, you know, the inventory is being added to. We're right at over 430 building permits for single family only issued in 2021. We did 456 last year. So we've added almost 900 homes uh, starts in two years and the numbers are still going crazy. Lastly, Jeff, let me just ask you this. I know you are fast track and are busy, but could you just give us a profile of the medical community in your city and uh, how they've dealt with COVID and the uh, just in general? Sure. Um, happy to. Um, we're kind of evenly situated between uh, Kennestone Hospital in Marietta and the new Northside Hospital Cherokee that was built on the south side of Canton. It's about the same distance to get to either one. So we have uh, access to, to re two really good institutions and networks that are associated with both of those um, facilities. We've got uh, numerous uh, medical office buildings in town uh, that are in every network that you can imagine from Northside to Piedmont to Emory to uh, Kaiser. Um, so there's, there's plenty of access. Um, I think like everywhere else, um, the facilities that are here had to learn and adjust on the fly on how to deal with the pandemic and how to all continue to offer services, whether that be increased um, telemedicine options or, or however they had to adjust. So um, I think they've, they've made it through fine. Um, we've all had to learn uh, and I think they were no different. Well, th thank you for your contributions to the community, Jeff. I know you 
as a city manager in these times, it has to be extremely difficult. There's a lot of pressures from a lot of different areas. So thank you very much for your service and congratulations on the outstanding job that you are doing and have done as the city manager of Woodstock. And thank you very much for being on our show. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, Lou. We've got a great community, great people here, and, and I work with a great team. So it makes my job much easier that way. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. And thank you for listening.